Okay, so welcome back to experiment number two, part B, rotational inertia. Again, in front of us, we have the same apparatus that you'll be using uh, for both part A and part B. This time, though, we are going to set it up a little bit differently. We're going to take this uh, longer crossbar with little holes in either end. We pass it through the hole at the top of this vertical shaft and we lock it approximately, we lock this little screw, tighten it uh, approximately so uh, this uh, bar is centered. Then we take two masses. This is an aluminum mass. This is, um, uh, I guess, a chrome-plated uh, brass mask uh, that's described in the manual. This is uh, smaller in size, but much, much heavier. This is much, much lighter. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach the lighter mass to the end of this crossbar, making sure that the screw goes through these little holes in the crossbar. And uh, to make sure that they're uh, secure, pull at it and it shouldn't move. This mass shouldn't shift. Then we take the heavier mass and we attach it to the other end of the crossbar, but we attach it um, um, much closer to the vertical shaft. Why is this? Because this is much heavier, once this is spinning uh, very rapidly, because uh, this has a much higher mass, okay, if it's at equal distance, um, uh, everything will be properly balanced and the whole apparatus will start to rock. So um, we want uh, to have it uh, uh, balanced. And to ensure that um, this uh, setup is balanced uh, correctly, tilt the apparatus like this, and you'll notice it doesn't have a, t a tendency to rotate down one way or the other. Okay, so once it's set up like this, we're ready to begin the experiment. And the experiment goes like this. Again, we're not going to go um, through all the details or take any measurements. What we do first is unravel the string that is wrapped around the shaft. And then we pass it over the pulley at this end. And we take um, a 500 gram mass, attach it to the end of the string, and again, using our stopwatch, we are going to measure the time it takes for 10 rotations. So we click our stopwatch, we release some of um, this. Uh, rotating shaft at exactly the same time and measure the time for 10 rotations. Once you've done that, okay, you repeat this uh, three times, I believe. So you have um, an accurate time for the time uh, uh, for 10 rotations. And uh, uh, from that, you determine uh, something called rotational inertia. Inertia is a property of matter, uh, uh, which um, uh, you will actually study in class. Uh, and inertia in general is um, uh, resistance to change in motion. Uh, resistance to change in motion, when you're dealing with linear motion, depends only on the mass. But in rotational systems, it does not depend only on the mass. It also depends on how the mass is distributed to. Okay. Um, so, again, with not, without going through the calculations and the formulas and um, uh, doing the actual experiment, um, this is the thing that you have to determine. And... Um, in this case, um, we want to determine the rotational inertia of two discrete masses, M1 and M2, that are separated um, distances R1 and R2 from the axis of rotation, in the center of this uh, shaft, okay? Now, um, we can't do it, unfortunately, here on Earth in, uh, in one step. We have to do it in two steps. So we're going to determine the rotational inertia of the crossbar and subtract the rotational inertia of the crossbar from the rotational inertia that we calculated for the crossbar and the masses. And what will we end up with? The rotational inertia of these two masses in space by themselves. Okay. So, for this part of the experiment, we remove these masses after we measured what their radiuses are. And wrap the string around the shafts, everything is set up. 
you do not attach the heavy mass, otherwise this thing will spin uh, very, very fast. You attach uh, the 50 gram mass, like this, and again, you measure the time for uh, 10 rotations and determine what the rotational inertia is of the support rod by itself. And when you subtract one from the other, the difference will equal to the theoretical value for rotational inertia, which is given in your lab manual here, uh, in this formula here. Rotational inertia is um, mass one, R1 squared, plus mass two, R2 squared. And that's it. If you want to uh, know any further, uh, uh, if you have questions, or need to, to know any further information about uh, rotational inertia, or some of the new concept that you'll be introduced, like torque, when you have a force times a radius, uh, please come to the Tuesday afternoon um, informal lab tutorials that we have every week. So, not to keep it too long and then lose your attention, uh, it's bye for now.